Okay, we've got our horse done. He's finished now, except for painting and adding on a little, a uh, couple attachments on the saddles and the bit and the bridle. But we can't do that until after it's painted. So what we want to do right now is we want to set the scene for this figure that we carved. Now, to me, when you carve a figure, it's just like framing a painting. If uh, you, you certainly wouldn't ha hang a painting on your wall if it wasn't in a frame. At least I wouldn't, because the frame amplifies the appeal of the picture. Well, our base is going to certainly amplify the appeal of this horse because it's going to put him in a scene to make, to give him a purpose for being there. So that's what we're going to do right now. Now, when I make a scene, I usually, if you've looked at my carvings, they're built out of three pieces. I start out for the top piece with just, I use just an old piece of paneling. This is just, a, I guess, one eighth inch paneling, maybe three sixteenths, I don't know. Anyway, it's just some old paneling that I used when we built the gallery next door. That's my first piece. I'm going to cover this with Bondo to be able to apply scenic material to it. And we'll do that a little later. The next piece is a piece of basswood. Now this, this is uh, from Heineke. He sells it in a board and it's a half inch thick. Okay, nice clear basswood. This, I, put, I don't put any finish on this. I just varnish it. The next piece below that is a hardwood. In this case, it's oak. I went down to uh, Lowe's and just bought me an oak board. This is a one inch or three quarter inch after they trim it off. Three quarter inch, you'll find this. It's nice, good, clear wood. And uh, I screw this piece to this piece with three screws, which I've already countersunk down here and put in place. The reason I did that now is because when I go through the next first step of uh, adding scenic material up here on top, these two bottom pieces have to be in place so they don't move around, okay? Because we're going to drill a hole through this piece, into this piece, and possibly down into this piece here. And we want those things all lined up so when we put them back together in the end, everything lines up. Now to get these three pieces, I use three patterns that I make. Uh, I'm not going to put these on the blog because I think you can draw these yourself. In this case, this one's nine and a half inches long or wide, excuse me. That's for the bottom oak piece. This one's eight and a quarter inches. That's for the basswood piece. And for the top piece of old paneling, this is seven and a half inches. And these are just arcs. And as you can see, I leave myself a border around there because I uh, routed a decorative edge around here. So I allowed myself about oh, a little less than, I'd say, five-eighths of an inch here. And up here on top, I allowed myself about oh, three-eighths inch. Okay? So just make these patterns as you go along and over time you'll build up a whole supply of them and they really come in handy for all different kinds of carvings, not only horses, but you know, you'll be able to use these for something else later on. So I just keep the paper patterns, hang them up on the wall and there they are. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to create a gate for this horse to stand in front of, like that. And I've went out in my little wood pile and I've got me two pieces of cedar. And when you're building things out of found wood, make sure you try to find cedar. Because cedar doesn't rot. This is dead. This is off of a dead cedar tree. But the wood is still solid. It's not going to break and decompose like other wood will. So I've marked me two spots here on each side. And these are going to be the poles that hold the gate. Now when I'm out looking for uh, wood, I always look for wood that has character to it, like this up here. Here's some pieces. I just went out and brought these in just to show you what they look like when I bring them home. They're just old scab wood. But uh, you can take them 
clip off all these little pieces that stick out here with your uh, knife, utility knife or whatever. Get them to the length and uh, size you want them. Take them over to your uh, Sandiflex wheel and uh, that wheel will strip off all that old dirty bark and stuff and clean these things up to where really all you need to do with these things uh, to, to get them ready to, for the final finish is just to varnish them a dark color. So anyway, I've indicated my two spots here on this seam to where these are going to go. i got to look at them to make sure I get them lined up. I'm going to have a sign up there above the gate, so I want to make sure that I've got a level area going across like this to attach that sign to. So, but right now what I want to do is drill those two holes, okay? So I'll set my horse aside. I'll line up my top piece onto the other two pieces. Right there looks good. This is a 3 8 inch drill. As you can see, I've put dowel in the bottom of each piece. This will be glued together. And this will go down through that top piece. And probably that just right down into the bottom piece. So right here, I'm going to start my hole. That should be far enough. Here I'm going to do the same thing. Now, I've got that in there like that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bend it back just a little bit. If I don't want that post and gate sticking straight up, I want it leaning lean back just a little bit. Because that will help create interest in the seam. If you didn't do that, because the gate is higher than the horse, it would look like the gate was falling over on the horse. But by leaning it back just a fraction, that won't happen. So there we've got our two holes drilled. Now let's put our sticks in. There's one. And there's the other. Okay, well we don't want that. Now what we do is we model this thing to where we get it to where we want it. As you can see, I'm still going to have to go go deeper over there. And I want to there, you see how this leans back just a little? This one leans back a little more. But that, you know, that depends on where that sign is going to come up against it. Because this isn't perfectly flat like this one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is drill that hole a little deeper. I didn't know that come out like that. Maybe those pliers. I think this piece should go over here, so I'm going to switch it. Justin, before you go doing any scenic, because you certainly don't want to mess it up. Yeah, that's looking pretty good right there. I like that. 
So we got the character of this piece, which looks real nice. Got that branch up there at the top and these knobs coming off. This one's kind of straight, but that's all right. You can't get everything. Up here at the top where I cut them to length, I went back and I dis dis distressed them with, uh, with my knife and then came back with the burning pin and kind of burnt some split lines up there and everything. But see down here where this one split when I drilled it out, well, that's going to be glued together and it'll be solid, but that split piece right there just adds character to your piece. So now we put the horse on there. You can't see the gate yet. But you can see, get all this crud out of there, maybe. You can see that that, that really changes everything, doesn't it? it? Really makes that horse look spiffy, and that's what we want. We want this thing to be real appealing. And uh, well, I won't show you that because it doesn't have anything to do with it. So anyway, so now the next step. Well, first let me let me review here. On your bottom, when you after you get these three pieces cut out, this one is going to be covered by auto body putty. Okay, this one is just going to be varnished. This one is going to be stained a dark color and then varnished. And I rooted, routed an edge around here. I rooted my router to create this edge around here, to where I, when I put my name tag on here, it would be perfectly framed. And if Judy will hand me that name tag right over there, it's not the name tag that's going to go on here, but it's the one I used to, uh, to create it. See there, that name tag will just fit right in there, and the shape of this router closely approximates the shape on the edge of the name tag, and that makes it look real good. So you just like that. Okay, you want to finish these two pieces completely before you go drilling holes up here, all right? That's important. You don't need to put the varnish on them, and you don't need to put the stain on them yet. You can do that later, but you at least got to be able to put this thing together in the beginning so everything matches up perfectly, because you don't want to have to come back and do it after you get everything done, because then it's too late to make any adjustments. So anyway, we've got it the way we want it. Both pieces are leaning back at about the same angle, which is fine. And uh, they're fairly well flat across there to where I can put my sign. They're fairly even here. There's a little spread at the top, but that's not going to bother me much for me to put my gate in here. Now we're going to do that gate in the next segment, okay? Right now we're going to put the bondo on top of here, okay? Okay, we're ready to put the body putty on here. Now this is just a Bondo body filler. I get it down at Walmart. I buy it by the gallon because I use a lot of it. You can, it comes in a smaller can. Make sure you get your hardener. Now our three pieces, we have our three pieces here. We know the holes are going to match up. So we can just set this aside now. We can actually go ahead and uh, take these apart, remove the screws, take them apart, and finish the, these two pieces. I'll burn my name on the back here before I varnish this, but uh, they just need to be, this one's going to be stained and varnished, and this is just going to be varnished with polyurethane. So I'll set that aside because I don't need that now. Now, this is where I'm going to do my sneaking on this side. Like I said, this is just an old piece of paneling, but before I do that, I'm going to uh, first just carve off that sharp edge like this. And what this will do, this will give me more uh, gripping area for that bondo to hang on to. Just go around it like that. Basically, frost the cake. 
going to dip in here and get me a good dollop of this stuff. It's kind of stiff because it's cold down here. It was in the morning anyway. If you got a heated garage, it won't be this stiff. up good. Squeeze me out a bunch here. Middle of the door. And then we just stir this up until it's nice and mixed together. I'm going to have to work fast here because this stuff is stiff, and I don't want it going off on me before I get it spread out on the on top of this thing. We had a minor hiccup with the old uh, Bondo. It was just too old, and uh, it never adhered well to here, so after a little bit of cussing and a trip to Walmart, I went down and I bought me a smaller can this time. That way I'll probably be able to use it all up before it, the rest of it goes bad. So anyway, as you can see, when compared to the old stuff, this stuff is pretty thin, so it'll all work real well. So let's start over again. Put a gallop of this on there. Because it's thin, that should be plenty. Okay? Put all this back on the can here. This is still that hardener I used earlier, but it's the same stuff that they give you with the pint, okay? How much is this quart? Doesn't say 12 ounces. Anyway, so now we'll start over again. So here we go, this will be a little easier to mix. nice light pink color. Get all that stuff off the edge of it. considerably easier than the last stuff. So again, just like you're frosting a cake, just spread that on there. You're going to get a little on your hand. And then once you get it all pretty well on there, make sure you get it down along the edges. It's going to come right down to the newspaper. Don't worry about it being rough. Kind 
Now we're going to wait just a little bit while this uh, goes off. I'm going to kind of even out the top here. They don't have to be perfectly smooth. You want a little uh, variation in the surface of this because that will make your uh, scenicing material look that much more realistic. Okay. So I'm just going to let that set now. And once it sets up, we'll continue. It's been about five minutes now since uh, we stopped. And uh, it's set up. It's still soft and kind of sticky, but it's set up. You can, that's why I never clean this thing off until the very last, because that way I can judge how it's set up. See there, it's, it's all set up, but it's still, still soft. This is good hard as a rock here in a little while. But before that happens, what we want to do now is gently just Pull this off the edge of the table like this. And then once you get that much up, just gently lift it up. Like that. Because you don't want to bust off the edge. Okay? Now, see we've got all this excess around the bottom edge. Now, while the stuff is still soft, we want to take our knife and slide it along there and cut that off because we want that bottom to be completely level. Now you got to do this while the stuff is soft because you're not going to be able to do it once it sets up. Now you can see the edge of your paneling, little piece of paneling there. Now that sticks out too far. So what we want to do now is we want to carve this down pretty close to the edge of the paneling, but not quite all the way. Oops, see there I slipped. See it broke free. See there's the paneling. That's okay, I'm not worrying about it. Just be careful. Go around there. Maybe I'm doing this just a little too quick. But you definitely don't want to let it set up all the way. Here on the front we've got a big gob. So I'll come up around here real careful. Another big bunch right there. So now we got our form fairly well straight. So now what I want to do is go around the edge just real lightly and carve that off to where we don't have a sharp edge. There you can see I got right up next to the, to the edge. You want a gradual slope down to the edge of this. That's going to break off, so I'm just going to go ahead and break it off. She's getting pretty hard right now. It's still not set up completely.
next thing we want to look for is we want to look for any real high areas on here. Now this all looks pretty good. Here's a little high area right there. So I'm just going to carve that off. There's one right there. A bump right there. We'll just cut that off. Okay. There are two holes. So we can go ahead and punch those through. Not really worried about them being perfect and open again. We'll drill those out once everything gets done. There we go. And there we go. We're finished with that part. Okay? So now what we're going to do, with this finished, we're going to put some scenic material on the top of this and anchor it down. And we're going to do that here in just a second. For this next step, we're going to use Mod Podge. This is basically acrylic Mac Me, and you can find this down at Walmart, or Hobby Lobby. I've got me some uh, very fine dirt here. I don't know if you can see that. It's extremely fine. I go down the corner down here where two roads junction, gravel roads junction together and scoop me up a big uh, bunch of it, bring it back here and sift it through some old nylon hose to where it's, it's extremely fine. It's not dirt. It's gravel ground up. You don't want to use dirt or you just have a muddy mess. You don't want to use sand because it's basically silica and it just won't look good. It's best to use this. If you can't find this or get this, go down to a hobby shop that sells model railroad equipment and you'll find something equal to this. And we're going to use some soapy water. Okay, I'll explain what this is for here in a second. Alright, so we're going to take my Mod Podge. But first, I'm going to bring over my base and just put this on here and line her up see what it looks like and that looks fine so now I'll put this back out of the way I'm going to get that dirty I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm going to put this on here pretty thick You want to get it good along the edges. that spot that I goofed up on right there. See, it's going to be hidden here in just a minute. Okay, got that done. So we'll set this out of the way. We'll put this down here. Just drop it right there on the table, like that. Now I'm going to take my dirt. Dirt. Forget that word. Take my grill fine gravel. Get that piece out of there. I'm just going to shake this over the whole thing. Make sure I get those edges completely buried. I don't even want to see the edge. I just want to see a pile of fine gravel. It's like that. Okay? Just like that. Now I'm going to go clean my brush. Okay, in the time it took me to go clean my brush and wash my hands, uh, the Mod Podge has had a tenant, or the fine gravel and the Mod Podge have pretty well soaked into each other. So now, what I'm going to do, just like before, I'm just going to pull, pull this off to where I reveal the edge of it like that. I don't want to dump all that good gravel on the floor, so 
I'm just going to pull that off to where that edge is revealed. Get my finger up underneath there. Pick this up. Pull that back over so I don't lose any of that stuff. Bring that back over here. Just kind of tip this on its side. Kind of bounce it a little. See what's going on here. Okay, now we're going to look for spots. Now, because there's a lot of Mod Podge on there, see how this wrinkles? Well, we don't want that wrinkle effect, so just take your finger and just lightly kind of tap that down. Okay? Look all around the edges. Make sure we got good coverage. There's more than wrinkles. We don't want those. Now, if you get spots like that, don't worry about it. We're just after those wrinkles right now. There's a little overflow. I'm going to wipe that off. Kind of tap it. it looks pretty good. pick you up a pinch of that and just spread it on that like that. And that'll hide those edges. Okay. Now, take your soapy water. And the reason we use soapy water is with a couple drops of soap in some water, that'll break down the surface tension of the water. And when we spray it or mist it on here, that's going to pull that Mod Podge right up to the surface. If we didn't do that, put the soap in the water, it wouldn't have the same effect. So what I'm going to do is just lightly get this thing squirting. Lightly spray it up in the air so it comes down straight. Mm -hmm. See there? If you sprayed directly into it, what would happen is you'd probably spray away some of the dirt. And we just want to Get that nice and wet. Now that it's wet, I can spray more directly into it. Yep. That'll be good. Now, you can see, see the white areas? See, that's that Mod Podge coming up to the surface. And what that's going to do is completely glue down that surface. And that's exactly what we want. So right now, I'm just going to set this aside. I'll have to set overnight to dry completely. And then it'll be ready for painting and for the next steps to come. And we'll do that in the next video. But before I do that, first, put that thing there for a minute. I'm gonna put all this stuff I haven't used, get rid of the garbage in it, back in my can. So this stuff will, you know, a can full of this will last a long time. Put it back up in the cabinet. So until next time, when this is dry, I'll talk to you later.